The Wii Sports Table Tennis Super League. A place where brave challengers gather in the hopes of making it to the very top. Rumours were spreading amongst the crowds of excited fans that this was the year a new champion would be crowned. The competition was as fierce as it had ever been, and the question on everyone's minds was who would rise all the way to number one. Would it be Tatsuki the Tenacious, or Untouchable George, or perhaps Lucia the Unvanquishable? The people were in such a stir that nobody thought to pay attention to the unassuming newcomer, whose family name had long since become nothing but obscure table tennis folklore. No, as usual, Venus went unnoticed by almost everyone. Venus was a very good table tennis player. In fact, his father, Bungus, was credited with being the closest man to beating the table tennis elite four in the past 50 years. Having been trained from a young age, Venus was supposed to succeed where his father had fallen painfully short. However, after joining the Stoke-on-Trent Steamers baseball team four years ago, him and his father hadn't seen or spoken to each other even once. Regardless of this, Venus wasn't phased, for having come straight off the back of his team's victory in the Wii Sports Baseball World Cup, he was filled with determination and belief. Today, he would climb the rankings all the way to the very summit, and then, maybe then, he would be able to reach his father again. With the tournament's opening ceremony drawing near, Venus made his way through Woohoo Town to the Woohoo Island Table Tennis Resort, and just as he arrived, the announcer began to speak. Ladies and gentlewomen, ping pongers and pong pingers, welcome one and all to the annual Wii Sports Table Tennis Super League. Today we have a smorgasbord of talented challengers just raring to go. And with this in mind, allow me to explain how this thing works. Our contestants today will all be starting from the rank at which they left off last year. Newcomers, or those who missed last year, will start from zero. Ha ha ha, that's right Lucia, even you, you unvanquishable uh, woman. The contestants will then be pitted against each other. Those who win will gain a certain number of rank points, depending on the match's outcome. Those who lose will drop points. Upon reaching 700 rank points, participants will be allowed to challenge the Elite Four, the current four most fearsome players in the table tennis world. Nobody has beaten the Elite Four in 53 years. So I ask you, audience, what will happen this time? I guess we'll just have to find out, won't we? So without further ado, let the Super League begin! The crowd erupted into raucous applause, and before he knew it, Venus was being swept away to play his opening match. Unfortunately, his first opponent couldn't have been a worse draw. It was this year's Japanese regional champion, Tomoko. With tournament rules applying, this game would be first to six points, meaning for Venus, there really was no room for error. But straight away, things started very poorly. Venus served, and Tomoko immediately returned with a silver carrot. I should explain, in Wii Sports Table Tennis, a silver carrot is where the ball is returned onto the edge of the table, causing it to rebound at a wild angle. A golden carrot is when this is achieved directly after performing a diving roll, and a platinum carrot is something that the human brain can't even comprehend. If Tomoko was pulling out tricks like this in the first rally, then Venus would have to really step up his game. He served again, this time one of his father's famous high serves. And, instead of hitting the ball straight to Tomoko, he sent her this way and that. Tomoko attempted a second silver carrot, but by this point she was so dizzied from moving side to side that she miscued it and hit the ball out. 1-1, game back on. And the next point went even better. Venus yet again forced Tomoko this way and that. And, seizing upon another one of her wayward shots, he was able to smash the ball away from her to claim the upper hand. This was it. This was how his father had taught him to play. But Tomoko was no novice, and she quickly caught on to what was happening, forcing Venus to drop the next two points. His heart sank. 
If things continue this way, losing a point here, winning a point there, losing again, then he would never be able to get to the top of the rankings. And then, in the midst of his frustration, a voice called out to him from the crowd. Hey Venus! It was Scalene, one of his teammates from the Stoke-on-Trent Steamers baseball team. I came to watch you play, but it looks like you're getting a bit frustrated. Whenever I get frustrated, I just hit things really hard and smash things to pieces. So why not just try smashing the ball? Scalene's advice seemed unreliable, but it was worth a shot. Anything to change the pattern of this game. And so, the next point, Venus forced Tomoko down the left side. And when she returned it, he was set up perfectly for a huge smash. Bang! The ping pong ball was hit so hard, it nearly collided with an inflatable ring in the background. Smashing the ball might just work, thought Venus. Of course, what he didn't know is that Tomoko actually had a fear of fast flying objects. It's a wonder she made it this far in the first place. Whatever the case, it seems that Scalene had accidentally come up with the perfect counter tactic to Tomoko's playstyle. And this put Venus on the fast track to victory. Just a few more earth shattering power shots, one of which went into the pool and one of which was planted directly in Tomoko's face and Venus was able to secure a resounding 6-3 victory. With his first rank points to his name, the German regional champion, Fritz, was Venus's next opponent. Fritz had a very peculiar playstyle. In his native Germany, he was known as Löffelmann, or Spoonman in English. This was because of the way he spooned the ball upwards to apply a tricky backspin. In the first point of the game, this tactic proved rather unreliable, and Venus was feeling quietly confident. That is, until the next point, where he was completely fooled by Fritz's backspin. From then on, the game continued in a tricky fashion. Venus had to focus extremely hard to measure where Fritz's twisting and curving shots would land. Moreover, Fritz seemed to be masking his shots by allowing the ball to drop low below the table, meaning Venus couldn't judge how he would hit it. It was only through sheer power alone that Venus was still in the game at three apiece. Luckily for him, yet another of Venus's old baseball teammates was on hand to give him some advice. It was Xavier, and he spoke to Venus over the chanting of his adoring fans. Now Venus, as a wild card myself, I can say for sure that the most important thing is to always keep an element of mystery about you. That's what Fritz is doing by not letting you see him hit the ball, but he doesn't have any shot power like you do. So take his wild card technique and make it even more wild. And with this in mind, Venus began to let the ball drop as low as possible beyond his side of the table, then unleashing a powerful strike which gave Fritz no time to react. With this new technique, Venus was able to get 5-4 up, and at match point, he had the game within his grasp. But Fritz wasn't giving up, and with another of his signature spoon shots, the score was brought to 5-5, and Venus was heading into his first tiebreak. The rules of the competition stated that to win the game, either player would have to win by two clear points. The pressure was intense, and you could hear a pin drop amongst the crowd. But Venus couldn't lose. There was too much at stake. And with a couple of well-worked rallies, he dispatched Fritz and won the game 7-5. Venus was now on a roll, and his ranking continued to go up and up. As it turned out, his next opponent, Untouchable George, was actually named after the fact that he was extremely contagious, and not the fact that he was any good at table tennis. At least, that's what the commentator said after Venus demolished him 6-1. When playing Snake Eyes Hiroshi, Venus found that his serves were being returned too easily. Luckily, Tatsuki, the master baseball tactician from Yarikawa Prefecture, had come to watch this game, and he advised Venus to throw in a couple of fake tosses before his actual serve, to fool his opponent. Hiroshi couldn't handle this trickery, and Venus won the match 6-4. The winning streak continued as Venus dispatched Rachel, Ryan, and Barbara, all the while with glowing support from his baseball teammates. And before he knew it, Venus was only one game away from being able to challenge the Elite Four. His final opponent of the day, however, would be his toughest yet. Trained in the dojo of the Singing Crane, a seasoned pro of the Wii Sports table tennis circuit, and winner of loudest voice in all of Wii Sports three years in a row, Naomi 
sized Venus up from the other side of the court. I hope you're ready, because I'm about to destroy you! Shouted Naomi at a volume that no reasonable person would ever reach. Venus was quaking in his boots. He had nothing to reply with. But he'd come this far, and there was no giving up now. He would reach the Elite Four, and he would see his dad again. The adjudicator's whistle blew, and the match began. But as soon as the rally started, Naomi began to do something very strange. Whoa! Whoa! She was shouting as loud as she could every time she hit the ball, as if to propel it forwards with sound. And what's more, it seemed to be working. The ball was falling further and further back on the table. Before he knew it, Venus was having to stand far, far away to even reach Naomi's shots, and she was able to win the first point. In a state of mild panic, Venus began to use Scalene's technique and lashed at the ball with as much power as possible. This got him back to 1-1, but quickly after led to an error which gave Naomi the chance to smash the ball herself. Whoa! She shouted, and like a rocket, the ball soared past Venus in a flash. The game continued in a similar pattern. Venus was able to claw some points back. But eventually, Naomi's overwhelming volume and sheer presence would be too much. At five points apiece, going into a tiebreak, Venus was beginning to lose all hope. Whilst Naomi was incredibly intimidating, he could do nothing to bite back. Venus wasn't loud or brash at all. In fact, he never even spoke. People were constantly overlooking him. Indeed, he was sure that in the Wii Baseball World Cup, the commentator barely even mentioned him up until the final. What was he to do? Venus, don't worry! It was Engine Room. You don't have to match her in terms of volume or anything else! You don't have to play the game her way! Yeah, Venus, said Pipe. We like you whatever way you are. Loud? Quiet? Completely silent? It's up to you how you do things. Also, if you divide the volume of Naomi's shout by the deceleration of the ball at its apex, you can work out the angle of incidence to return it, said Mind Brain, which wasn't particularly helpful, but Venus appreciated the sentiment. Remember, Venus, said Wrinkles, it is sometimes those with the smallest voice that make the biggest impact. Venus looked at his friends with great admiration. Here he was, silent, trembling, and yet they accepted him wholeheartedly. More than that, they believed in him, so much so that he was beginning to believe in himself again. With one big WHOA, Naomi served, and the rally began at a ferocious pace. Naomi pulled off a silver carrot, but Venus returned the ball brilliantly, and Naomi was so flustered, she forgot to say whoa, and a window of opportunity opened for Venus to smash the ball and win the point. One more to go. But Venus had now hit his stride, and Naomi could do nothing to stop the inevitable. The Stoke-on-Trent steamers jumped for joy. 7-5, game over. Venus would be challenging the Elite Four tomorrow. Morning broke over Woohoo Island. This was the big day. Venus lined up amongst this year's strongest contestants and having reached 700 points individually, all of them would be challenging the four best table tennis players in the world. Venus? Venus turned, and what he saw shocked him. Just a little further down the line from where he stood was Lu Chia, his baseball team's biggest rival and captain of the infamous Lu Chia's baseball team. Venus, what are you doing here? But before he could answer, not that he would have anyway, the adjudicator called out his name. Contestant number 69, Venus. You will now be up against the first of our Elite Four. Follow me. And within moments, Venus was face to face with possibly the toughest table tennis player he'd ever seen. Daisuke, the dangerous. The real challenge began here. Okay, steamers. Let's get practicing! But, engine room, we don't have a proper pitcher. Hmm, yeah, you're right. But where could we ever find one? I heard rumours. What? 
I heard rumors that people have seen a mysterious man wandering around in the wastes of the Mii Plaza. How about we give him a try? <laughs> <laughs> Don't spout codswallop, Spindle! Our predicaments can't be solved by rumors of mysterious people. Besides, those who enter the Mii Plaza from the Wii Sports Home menu are mad. The edges of the Wii Plaza are where people go missing. Probably all you'll find there is hopeless souls and ex-professional Wii table tennis players. Anyway, I guess we'll just do some catching practice for today. Come on, guys. Uh, Venus? Where are you off? Oh, God, no, Venus. I was joking about the table tennis players thing. I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. You can't go there. It's, it's too dangerous. Venus, come back, please. Please. Come back, Venus. Oh, hello. What are you doing here? Ah, looking for your dad, are you? Yeah, lost as well, huh? Well, what's your name? Venus? What a strange name for a girl. Or a boy? Or uh, just a Venus then? Just a Venus? Yeah, that seems right somehow. Just a Venus. Venus, Venus, snap out of it! You're about to play Dangerous Daisuke, the first of the Table Tennis Elite Four! You're here to play ping pong, goddammit! Okay. Quick, mind brain, give him the rundown. Okay, Venus, as Engine Room just said, you're about to play Daisuke. In the table tennis world, he is known as the Conductor. Some say it's because he has his own brass band, but that just seems stupid if you ask me. I mean, what does he expect? His own theme song? Oh, uh, sorry, Xavier. No, I think it's actually because of his ability to dictate the tempo of the game. So, try to get the momentum going, and don't be swayed so easily. Bear in mind that the wind is east-westerly 3 miles an hour today, and we have a moderate temperature of 21 degrees- Yes, alright, mind brain, that's enough. Go on, Venus. You can do it. We believe in you. Just play in your signature Venus way. Signature Venus way? Venus didn't really know what this meant. He kind of had a style of play in baseball. But that wasn't going to help him in table tennis. Everything he knew about table tennis, he got from his dad. So, surely his style of play was actually the Bunga style of play. Something didn't feel quite right. But he should be proud to be able to play like his dad. In fact, he was proud. Those teachings had helped him get all the way to the Elite Four. Hadn't they? Before he could ponder on Engine Room's advice anymore though, the referee was beckoning him to serve. And with no time to think, the game began. The first point started well. Venus played a fine crosscut of a shot, then forcing Daisuke back the other way before performing a monumental smash that put the ball far out of Daisuke's reach. He continued his fine form, and with his second point in the bag, the mini identity crisis he was just having had almost faded away. However, in the next point, as Daisuke set up for his serve, something very unexpected happened. His name is Dangerous Daisuke, and he's very, very spooky. He will scare you into some form of submission. And if you don't pay close attention, well, I did forget to mention that he's got a rather violent disposition. It seemed Mind Brain had been wrong. Daisuke did have his own brass band. And with the power of music propelling him forwards, Daisuke began to turn the tide. It was now Venus who was struggling to keep the ball on the table. And with the score at 2-2, Venus attempted to switch things up by using Shinosuke's fake serve technique. But as he was doing so, Daisuke's brass band appeared once again. Yes, there's no one quite like him and he will beat you on a whim with fear and danger as his usual tradition. Oh, he will put you in a bin and secure a perfect win, knocking you out of this year's ping pong competition. Venus was distracted, and as Daisuke grew ever stronger into the game, Venus fell behind 3-2. There was something about Daisuke's overwhelming self-confidence that intimidated Venus. He was so assured in who he was. 
his brass band were here behind him, singing songs which detailed everything he stood for. Everybody, including himself, knew exactly who he was and what he was about. But Venus had none of that, nothing to say, no identity to attach himself to. He was just, well, just Venus. Seeing Venus's morale drop further and further, Engine Room decided to step in. But, not sure how to help, he began reciting every inspirational quote he could think of. Uh, chin up champ, keep your head straight king, your crown's falling, the grass is always greener on the other side. This worked to an extent, Venus was able to pick himself back up and win the next point. Let's go Venus, you can do it, reach for the stars. Venus was getting better, with each hit he sent Daisuke scurrying across the table. And after another brilliant rally, Venus pulled off a silver carrot. Daisuke just about managed to return the ball, only for Venus to smash it back and win the point. On the front foot and 4-3 up, things were looking good. The engine room, who had been keeping Venus going, was beginning to run out of inspirational quotes. Uh, um, play good. Oh god, um, plenty of fish in the sea. Um, Oh, that's it. Play like your father would play, Venus. Your father? said Daisuke. Hang on. I knew it. You're related to Bungus, aren't you? Mm, oh, yeah, he looks just like Bungus. Yeah, 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 Venus suddenly felt an immense amount of pressure. Oh, no, said Engine Room. I think I've just made a big mistake. Yes, now that I think about it, you look just like him. I'll have you know it was your dad. Bungus, who stopped my dad, Old King Cole, from reaching the Elite Four all those years ago. Well, well, looks like I'm about to get revenge. Without another word, Daisuke served. Venus returned as best he could, but Daisuke's next shot was on a whole nother level. And, fueled with anger and rage, Daisuke finished off the rally with a thunderous smash. As Venus watched the ball sail past his face, he felt the game was as good as gone. With Daisuke in this mood, and so much pressure being thrown on him thanks to the comparisons to his father, what on earth could he do? But as the ball kept going, and kept going, its collision course became clear. The drummer from Daisuke's brass band had chosen a terrible time to try crossing behind the table, and with a loud bonk, the table tennis ball pierced straight through the skin of his bass drum. Oh no, said the bass drummer. You've gone and punctured me drum. I can't play songs like this. And the band began to walk away. No guys, please stay. Without you, I'm lost. Nobody will know who I am. I'll be no one. With his band gone, and Venus just barely being able to muster the courage to continue, the game finished in unflattering style. Daisuke made a couple of mistakes. Venus was able to capitalize and win the game 6-4. With no intention to celebrate this empty victory and desperately wanting to get away from anyone and everyone, Venus made to leave immediately. But before he could, he was blocked off by the announcer. Well, I never. Related to the famous Bungus, are we? Tell me, how's it feel to succeed someone like that? It's big shoes to fill, that's for sure. Do you think you can live up to it? <laughs> a man of few words. Yes, you're just like your father. Venus, Venus, quick over here! Lucia grabbed Venus by the arm, and they began to run, and run, and run. Oh, oh, phew, okay, I think we lost them. Right, Venus, you played pretty well there, but there's certainly room for improvement when it comes to confidence. Why am I helping you? In the Wii Sports Baseball World Cup, you help me loads. It's the least I can do to pay you back. And also, I may have potentially been knocked out by the hardest member of the Elite Four and want you to get revenge for me. But that's beside the point. Okay, where to start? Venus? What are you doing with her? It was Engine Room. Let me help you, Venus. Right, well, we were just about to plan our own strategies, actually, so we don't need your help here. I... I... I know, I know. The truth is, I want to make up for the mistake I made back there. Ah, uh, fine. 
we'll all work together. Right, anyway, I was thinking, you don't want to use your dad's table tennis style, right? So, just try using someone else's. I'm sure there's some people you can think of to copy. Well, there was that Spoon Man style, wasn't there? And there's the one that you've already done today, Shinosuke's fake serves. And Scalene taught you that smashing technique, right? I think we can rule out Naomi's shouting technique. And I'm not sure about you, Lucia, but I don't fancy forming a brass band. Actually, I'm rather good at euphonium, thank you. Oh, that's actually quite cool. Anyway, so Beaners, whoever you're facing next, just pick a style, go through them one by one, and whichever feels the most natural, will stick with. Ha, <laughs> whew, there you are. Venus, you need to get back to the pitch. Your second game has just been announced. And with that, they all once again headed back to the table tennis resort. The second member of the Elite Four was a woman named Emma. But, upon taking his place on the other side of the table, Venus noticed she wasn't carrying a table tennis bat. How was she going to play then? The answer came immediately, as Emma reached below the table, took off her shoe, and held it up. What was with these Elite Four members? How could Emma be so confident in herself as to use a shoe? Just don't question it, Venus thought to himself. All he had to do was what Lucia and Engine Room had told him to. Seeing as he was serving first, he decided to try out Shinosuke's fake serves again. Like everyone so far, Emma was initially deceived by this trick. However, because fake serving took so long, when Venus went to do it for a second time, the announcer took the opportunity to interview him. Well, Venus, great trick you've got there. Tell me, was it your father who taught you that? Emma was alerted to what Venus was doing, and she was able to win the second point. Thankfully, as Emma was using a shoe instead of a bat, her hits were not always consistent, and Venus was able to make up for his interview blunder by bringing the score to 2-1. Now was the perfect time to switch to a new technique. He decided to use Spoonman's technique next, giving the ball a tricky backspin and then letting the ball drop low below the table. But, as the ball dropped, the announcer once again slithered in. Tell me, Venus, what's the secret to your success? Does table tennis run in the family's blood? And by the time the announcer had stopped talking, the ball had dropped so low that it hit the ground, and the point was Emma's. It seemed the spoon technique didn't fit Venus either, and at 3-2 down, there was really only Scalene's smash technique left. Of course, smashing the ball did work more often than not, and Taking three successive rallies to get to a 5-3 match point, Venus was beginning to think maybe this was the one for him. Unfortunately, without the extra oomph that something like Naomi's shouting technique would add, it seems smashing it wasn't always a foolproof idea. What's more, thanks to the sturdiness of the sole of Emma's shoe, whatever Venus did, Emma could hit right back. 5-5. For Venus, this would mean yet another tiebreak. And unfortunately, before that, another opportunity for the announcer to interview him. Ho ho! I'm not sure your father would be making mistakes like that. Haven't you been practicing with him recently? Hoo hoo hoo! I joke, I joke. Now, tell me, what's the Venus Bungus family's favorite morning snack? Venus was beginning to panic again. All these questions, all this expectation, he was sure that by trying other techniques, he would rid himself of the constant comparisons, but it hadn't worked, and none of these other techniques felt any more natural anyway. The pressure was now so immense that Venus's hands were shaking violently, and he could barely hold his table tennis bat. It felt like everything was closing in. He couldn't breathe. That's when Pipe began to speak. Hey, Venus. Remember, on that day you were searching for your dad in the Mii Plaza, and you found me instead? I asked you who you were. Do you remember? The answer we settled on? You were just Venus. And that was enough. Yes, that's it, Venus. We were so stupid, trying to get you to play like everyone else. You should play like you. What is it you're always doing in baseball? The, and then there's Venus thing. That's your playstyle, Venus. That's you. With a peep of the referee's whistle, the tiebreak had commenced. Emma served and began playing some incredible shoe shots. But then, there was Venus, a silver carrot, 
6.5. The next point began. Emma displayed unbelievable techers, using the toe end of her shoe to punt the ball over the net. And then, there was Venus. Just like that. So quick you could almost miss it. 7-5. Venus had won. Engine room, Pipe and Lucia jumped for joy. That was two of the Elite Four down. Only two more to go. The announcer stood there in disbelief. I... I... I haven't seen anything like that before. That was... well, that was... that was just... Venus. The crowd was in absolute pandemonium, jumping up and down. But that was weird, thought Venus. Hidden in the middle, there was one man standing very, very still. A man in glasses with a grey beard. No, it couldn't be. This was too soon. All of a sudden, things went very dark, and Venus found himself completely and utterly alone. He had been here all too many times before. But for Venus, this did not make the experience any less distressing. A familiar feeling of mounting tension began to rise in him, and as he sat there, surrounded by nothing but void, he knew what came next. Glimmers of painful memories began to appear around him, and before he could do anything about it, he was reliving everything all over again. Now, Venus, take this. What is it, Dad? This is a table tennis bat. Hold it close. This will become your best friend. <laughs> nice, Venus. Excellent shot. You know, you've really got a talent for this. Great, Venus. A bit more backspin and nobody will stand a chance. <laughs> you'll be playing just like me in no time, Venus. No, you'll be better than me. Dad, I'm not sure about this table tennis thing. The bat just seems a bit small, and I don't want to play all on my own. Don't worry, son. I felt the same way at your age. You'll grow into it. Now, a couple more rallies before we stop. Venus, I've told you before, you're cutting across the ball too much. Now come on, just a couple more hours. No, straighten your back. Posture is important. Hey, Dad. What's that game they're playing over there? What? Oh, that's just baseball. Pay no attention to that. My biggest regret in life is that I didn't devote all of my time to table tennis. If you don't want to end up where I am, then you have to focus. Bungus, he's just a kid. He's not just a kid. He's a winner. He'll be a winner. No, Venus, no. That's not good enough. This isn't how I taught you to play. Do you want to win or not? Um, Dad, I... I don't think I want to play table tennis anymore. What? But, but, all the work I've put in for you. I've given you everything I have, and you're throwing it back in my face? I, I just can't do it anymore. I'm tired. It hurts. I'm no good at it. Venus, you're just like me. If you stray from this path, you'll be doomed to a life of failure. And that's why I've joined a baseball team. A what? A baseball team with my friends. Get out. But... Get out! I don't want to hear you say anything like that ever again. In fact, just don't speak. Now get out! Okay, fine. If you won't go, I guess I'll go instead.
Venus? Venus, are you okay? Keep playing the euphonium, Lucia. I think it's working. I'm trying. I haven't played in ages, okay? <laughs> wake up, Venus, wake up. <laughs> Please wake up from this coma. Venus, Venus, can you hear me? Oh, thank the gods. Are you okay? What? Your dad? I... I haven't seen him anywhere, Venus. Venus twisted his head frantically in every direction, but his father was nowhere to be seen. Ladies and gentlewomen, next up to the table, it's Venus versus the Tumble Dryer Hero Massa. Oh no, they're calling his name already. Listen, Venus, you're against Hero Massa next, but you don't have to if it's too much. I'm worried about you. Are you sure, Venus? said Mind Brain. Listen, I don't really know much about Hiramasa. The only thing I've heard is that they call him the Tumble Dryer. So, I'm not sure if he's just very good at drying clothes or something, but it seems ominous. But Venus wasn't giving in. He stood there, resolute and defiant. And eventually, his friends gave in and allowed him to challenge the next member of the Wii Table Tennis Elite Four. Hiramasa stood on the opposite side of the table with a malicious grin spread across his face. I'm afraid this is where it ends for you, child. Only true table tennis players make it past me. And before Venus could reply, not that he would have anyway, the referee moved into position, put his whistle to his mouth, and the game began. Venus tossed the ball high into the air before serving with pace. Confusion, anger, and pain weighed heavily behind each of his ferocious hits. But Hiramasa was unfazed. He was returning everything. And then... Without warning, he performed the near impossible. A golden carrot. Everybody, including Venus, stood there stunned. To have such control over the ball whilst in mid-spin. This must be why they called him the Tumble Dryer because of his incredible rolling ability. In the face of such immense skill, Venus should have felt defeated right then and there. But for some reason, he felt invigorated, like he was ready to fight, as if there was a reassuring presence behind him, pushing him forwards. He served again, and the rally restarted just as intense as the previous one. Venus could feel the momentum shifting towards Hiramasa every time he returned the ball. And then... Venus couldn't quite believe what he had just pulled off. Hiramasa had hit him with a tricky silver carrot, and after a poor return, the game should have been his for the taking. But, yet again, something pushed Venus forwards. He felt compelled to stretch to the absolute limit of his reach, and, in doing so, he had fallen into his own diving role. Having been victim to a golden carrot just one point ago, Venus had just scored one all for himself. Suddenly, the feeling behind him was there again, and he turned instinctively. It was him. But, just as soon as he was there, he had disappeared. What was this? Was his father really somewhere near, or was Venus just seeing things? Once more, his head darted around, searching for any small sign that might prove his sanity. But, as before, he saw nothing. Taking advantage of Venus's disorientation, Hiramasa served and stole a point before Venus had even come to terms with what was going on. By the time he had finally settled down, yet another point had been dropped, and the score was 3-1. This was it. Venus would have to use his trump card. He hadn't wanted to resort to this so soon, but Venus had to overturn this deficit before it became too insurmountable. He served, waited for Hiramasa to hit the ball, and then there was Venus. But Hiramasa returned it, and then there was Venus. But Hiramasa returned again. It wasn't working. His only unbeatable strategy was being beaten in front of his eyes. Hiramasa performed a big smash, and Venus was now down by four points to one. Predictable, Hiramasa jeered. It's obvious, you aren't a true table tennis player. You're just a baseball player in table tennis players' clothing. 
Yes, I'm sure they all love you in the world of baseball, but that means nothing in the Table Tennis Super League. That farce of a sport won't help you here, boy. Beep, beep, boop, boop, beep, boop, beep. Hello? Yes, this is MindBrain. We've got a code 451 in progress, someone just insulted the power of baseball. Hi, yes, this is Engine Room here. Venus needs our help. Get all of the boys here stat. You've got it all backwards, Mr. Hiromasa. For us, it's not a choice. Baseball this, table tennis that. We believe in Venus no matter what he's doing and we'll move heaven and earth to support him. It was overwhelming. Everyone was here. Everyone. Venus began to feel that sensation again, a hand on his back, pushing him forwards. Only this time, it was dozens of hands and they were all lifting as one. Let's go, Venus! You can do it! Smash the ball as hard as you can! With a huge bang, Venus was back to 4-2. Reach everything that comes your way, like a wall of hands. Let your heart sing whatever theme tune it wants. Face your foes with the courage of a dragon. Hoot hoot, hoot hoot. Venus had brought it back to 4-3. The game was heating up. It didn't even matter that Hiromasa reached match point first. The encouragement and support from his friends didn't stop. Give him some crazy topspin, Venus! Shinosuke Swaz! Shinosuke Swaz! Let's go, champ! Play some ping pong, goddammit! Venus, I, I think I love you! And against all the odds, he managed to bring the game to a tie break. The atmosphere suddenly became tense. And when Hiramasa managed to take the next point, everyone fell silent for the first time in a while. This match point now had everything riding on it, but as Venus went to serve, one final voice called out to him from somewhere indistinct. Try it again, son. Never stop trying to be you. Hiramasa showed off the very best of his skills, even pulling out another one of his diving rolls. But then, there was Venus. A shot planted straight into his smug face. The next point commenced, and Hiramasa's talent was once again on display. But then, there was Venus. Not even the tumble dryer himself could reach this one. The game was over. Venus would be facing the table tennis champion. Well, folks and blokes, don't you go anywhere, because this is shaping up to be a mouth-watering spectacle. In just a few moments of your sweet, sweet time, it will be my pleasure to present to you Venus, the challenger who has overcome all of the odds, versus our reigning champion, and the undisputable greatest table tennis player in the world, Matt, the Destroyer! <laughs> Venus! Venus, wait! Time stopped. He was there. Venus hadn't been seeing or hearing things after all. He and his father Bungus were finally, properly, face to face. Venus, listen to me. You can't... How dare you appear now? Lucia interrupted. When he's needed you, all this time. Venus, you have to listen to me. Whatever happens, don't play this game of table tennis. And what's wrong? Worried he's going to achieve what you never could? Said Engine Room. You don't understand. It's too dangerous. Venus, promise me. But Venus was suddenly feeling angrier than he'd ever felt before. All of his childhood, this is what his dad had been pressuring him towards. And now he was telling him to just stop? You see your son for the first time in years, and that's all you have to say. Listen, you don't know the situation. Venus turned and walked away, towards the table tennis table. He had decided. He didn't care what his dad said. He was going to play. As he stood there staring Matt down, he expected him to say something. Maybe taunt him like the others had, but he remained completely still and completely silent. 
Of course, Venus didn't say anything either, so it was quite an awkward silence, really. But that awkward silence was broken by the sound of the referee's whistle. And, for the very final time, Venus went to serve, and the match began. From the get-go, it was clear that Matt was on another level. Each of his strikes was perfect, measured, and precise. And as the first rally continued, he radiated an increasingly menacing aura. Venus hit the ball out, and the first point went to Matt. You see, Venus? He's too good! It's not safe! Please, don't go any further! Venus felt the sense of indignation flow through him again, and it fueled him during his next rally. He was able to hit an impressive silver carrot, bringing the score to one all. Please, I know you're probably angry at me, but you have to listen. Angry? Why shouldn't Venus be angry? He'd been abandoned by his only parent for half of his life! He took his frustration out on the ping pong ball, and at this point, he was actually winning 2-1. You can do it, Venus! cried his friends on the sidelines, but they had all failed to notice that Venus's mental state was slipping further and further away. And then, to make things worse, Matt began to speak. You felt it too, haven't you? The all-consuming nature of anger, the overwhelming darkness of panic and anxiety. Use them, harness them, Venus, devote them towards table tennis, and become one with me. Venus could feel himself being sucked in. Matt's aura was overpowering his senses. He felt sick. So mixed up, he could barely swing his table tennis bat. As his hands began to shake violently, he dropped point after point. And, just as quickly as he'd found himself ahead, he was now down by four points to two. Be. Nurse. Run. While you still ca- His father seemed to be flickering out of existence. And, in that instant, the anger he was feeling dropped away and it was replaced with an unshakable dread. Leave Venus alone, you demonic fraud! shouted Engine Room from somewhere far off in the distance. No, Venus thought. He wasn't going to let himself go into that state. Not again. He fought as hard as he could, and, barely even aware of how his body was moving, one way or another, he was able to win the next point and bring the score to 4-3. Despite his attempts though, he could not break out of this relentless vortex. The next rally rolled round, and Matt continued to hit smash after smash his way. It was all too much. 5-3. Match point. Hmm. Very disappointing. It seems you do not possess enough devotion to the art that is table tennis. You will fail because your heart is set on baseball just as your father failed because his heart was set on you. Venus didn't understand. He never told you, did he? Your father didn't quit table tennis because he wasn't good enough, Venus. The idiot quit to take care of you. If he was truly powerful like me, he would have cast you aside and taken up his table tennis bat without a second thought. But instead, he compromised, and decided to train you to take his place. Of course, it didn't go to plan, and after his petty argument with you all those years ago, the fool came to challenge me himself. He was so out of practice, of course, that he was easy work. I thought I'd finished him off, but it seems the rumors of him escaping to the Mi Plaza were true. Still, looks like he's barely clinging to existence anyway. A wave of guilt hit Beena straight in the gut. His dad had quit table tennis because of him. Given up on his dream because of him. And he had dared to love baseball over table tennis. His father had been defeated by Matt because of that one wrong choice. And now, here he was, unable to get even the smallest amount of retribution. Why did he have to like baseball? Table tennis was fine, wasn't it? This could all have been avoided. It was all his fault. Venus, 
Don't you even for a moment feel responsible for all this. While I've been away, I've realized a lot of things, and I can't believe it's taken me this long to tell you this, but uh, you can enjoy more than one thing. Sure, you're great at table tennis, but you're great at baseball too. You seem to be a great friend, and above all of that, you're a wonderful son that I should never have cast aside. I wanted to tell you that- INSOLENCE! Matt interrupted. I can't listen to this. I have not spent my whole career absorbing the souls of table tennis players to be feeling emotional thanks to this waffle. Passion. Feelings. Emotions. I will become a perfect being that exceeds them all! At this point, Venus had almost completely forgotten that they were still playing a table tennis game at all. But, as Matt proceeded to explode in a surge of fury, his desperation to hear the end of what his dad had wanted to tell him drove him onwards. And with all his might, he smashed the ball straight into Matt's face, bringing the game to a deuce. Matt's rage became even more unstable, and, all of a sudden, Venus's friends began to be absorbed into the void as well. Engine Room, Mind Brain, Pipe, and Lucia were disappearing before his eyes. This couldn't happen. He wouldn't let it happen. His friends had been here for him since the very beginning of this tournament. Supporting him, consoling him, they were the best friends he could ever have wished for. Matt sent Venus Y to the right, but with a defiant roll, he just about managed to return the ball to the other side of the table. Then, as Matt tried to force him the other way, he thrust the ball far into the distance, and claimed the upper hand. Matt roared with discontent. Venus felt that his head would split in two from the noise, and within seconds, the score was back at six all. It was hopeless to try and compete with Matt in this state. Venus knew the feeling all too well. It was a horrible feeling. He was sure that Matt must be experiencing all kinds of pain, anger and confusion. If anything, Venus had to save him before he was too far gone. He knew now that merely beating him in table tennis would not be enough. There was only one way to bring him back. To bring everyone back. And for Venus, it would be the most difficult task of all. He would have to say something. He would need to talk. Hey, Matt. I haven't seen my dad properly in a really long time. I want to... I want to apologize to him. Um, would it be okay if you could give him back, please? Venus, I... It's not you that should be apologizing. It's me. I was so bitter about not quite making it, that I tried to mold you into a person that you weren't. I wanted to tell you that, when I saw you winning the Wii Baseball World Cup, it was the proudest moment of my entire life. Since then, I've been trying to find the right moment to talk to you. I wish I could have done it sooner, but, well, the whole fading in and out of existence thing, and to tell you the truth, I was afraid. I... You... I'm just so... And with that, it was all over. The score didn't matter. All the worry and all the pain had gone. Venus was happy.